Hyundai. This is Amy Agenda. Thanks for your company. With me now, Labor frontbencher Ed Husick and the Parliamentary Secretary of the Prime Minister, Josh Frydenberg. Ed Husick, first to you on the, the debt ceiling issue. Why not just allow the, uh, the government to increase the, 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 the debt limit? That's what Mr Hockey is calling for. And the Prime Minister made it pretty clear that that's what the officials are telling them, that that's where the debt level is going to go, upwards of $400 billion. Why not deal with it once and for all? Well, we said that uh, we've announced that we're prepared to let the debt ceiling go to, they can get up to $400 billion today. Uh, but anything beyond that should be explained uh, as to why that's the case. The government's refused to actually uh, release my EFO early and allow people to actually see the state of the books. Um, and uh, the other thing is too, which will be a bit inconvenient uh, as well, Kieran Gilbert, stop laughing. I know we've got these. I'm sorry, moths. we've just got a moth that's flying <laughs> around the road. Bogon moth. Yes. And, uh, yeah, we were trying to get rid of it before we came back. Great it's moments it, on AM Agenda, it's a, folks. It's a killer moth. Great but anyway, sorry agenda. to interrupt you. No, it's okay. Oh, well, the. The, the other politics of distraction, by the way, Ed. Yeah, absolutely. You planted that moth. Yeah, that's right. I'd expect that. You don't from want to talk Brian about Bird. debt, do you? No, well, uh, the point I was going to make is that uh, actually you guys um, demanded uh, detail and wouldn't allow any, uh, in fact, would not only not allow uh, the debt ceiling to increase, you voted against it and you demanded specifics. Now, you won't even release my EFO uh, until well after, you know, uh, Santa's starting to get soot stains. You know, you're not going to be able to see the books until then, and then you're still wanting us to lift uh, the debt ceiling. Why not, to okay, well, why not just provide the detail if if you do need the 500 billion? Provide well, it, be done with it. Well, let's put some facts on the table here, uh, Kieran. Uh, John Howard and Peter Costello bequeathed to Labor a golden fiscal legacy: zero government debt and about 70 billion dollars in the bank. Now we've been inheriting you know, 300 billion dollars of debt and an interest bill of more than $10 billion a year. So this is Labor's debt. You know, taking over from Labor is like sifting through the ruins after the fall of Rome. That's what it is. We're, we're turning up there and we open the books and we've got all this government debt. So we have to lift the debt ceiling. We do not want a situation like the United States where there was great uncertainty for weeks and weeks and weeks <laughs> as there was a, a gridlock in the Congress about lifting the debt ceiling. And we don't want that. But, but no it's long, Bo. Come on. You cannot liken the same thing. We've said we will definitely vote. We will definitely vote for the 400 billion today. Right. Um, as for debt, um, can you explain to us why you went against Treasury, against Treasury advice, provided the RBA with nine billion, you're giving 1.5 billion to the O'Farrell government on West Connex, right. um, and the project still has a lot of unanswered questions. You want to raise the debt ceiling because without we... without any facts uh, on the table as to why you want to do it, and you've been pouring all this money in. Uh, in you know, the last few weeks, and you then want to go ahead and lift the debt. Well, the, fact, the, fact, the facts are there in the sense that they've said the numbers, the, the debt will rise to up, up it's going to break through the debt ceiling. Billion. He, the the Tony Abbott made that clear yesterday. So why not just deal with it and and and, and deal with it once they and won't, for all? And they won't release the they won't release the detail of it. They won't release. The actual incoming. But it's your, is, is, is it Labor's legacy? Wait, wait a second. Wayne, Wayne second. Swan, your treasurer, not, your treasurer Wayne Swan, Wayne Swan said. Is this the Frydenberg program? No, 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 Am I listening to you your just, dulcet tones a whole half hour? You've just had a very nice monologue. Look, the point is, it's your debt. You saddle the Australian people with three hundred million dollars. You've a lot of debt in the right, last few days. And you're going to break through the debt ceiling in, at Christmas. So we have to lift the you've, debt ceiling now. Now, flundered. if you look around the rest of the world, there are some cold economic winds. So this is prudent economic management okay. to lift it Let's to Okay, Ed, your response. Hang on. The, they won't release the incoming Treasurer's brief. They, they just refused to, to release it. Treasury said that they needed to maintain the relationship with the Treasurer, not the relationship with the Australian people, and come up with the facts. They won't release my EFO, and they've just come out of the blue after railing about debt and telling us there was a budget emergency. Then, when they get elected, they suddenly want to lift the debt so ceiling. Tony Abbott in opposition said when the, the then government back in May of last year wanted mm -hmm. to lift the debt ceiling, he said the government has to justify this. Our money, our future is too important to be mortgaged like this without the government giving us the strongest possible arguments for it. We have justified it because at, at Christmas you'll blow through the $300 billion debt ceiling. OK, so that justifies to 400 and the office Where's the justification well, the office for 500 of, Well, the Office of Financial Management says that you need about a $60 to $70 billion buffer, right? So you lift to that. Now, the debt ceiling is expected to go above $400 billion, and in terms of Australia's debt, is expected to go above $400 billion. So we're leaving that you know, $60 to $70 billion 
$1.5 billion buffer, taking that into account, taking the advice that Joe Hockey has got from Treasury and other places, means that we need to be prudent. You, you, you're uh, playing Russian roulette according to the Treasurer and uh, according to the Prime Minister, Tea Party style politics from Labor. Well, the same uh, now Treasurer who when was Shadow Treasurer was demanding detail, was demanding updated uh, budget briefings was uh, also prepared to vote against us lifting the debt ceiling last time and I should take them on board. I mean the problem is this is less government more invasion of the body snatchers. We can't even tell who these people are anymore because the Australian people voted for one government and they're getting something completely Here, different. Something I want to move on. Carbon tax, the mandate. Surely it's the most anticipated, as I said in the introduction to the program, the most anticipated promised bill in, if it's not, in Australian history, it's certainly in the semi-finals in terms of the, the most uh, promised bill. How can you say they don't have a mandate for it? Because we uh, actually went to the election as well saying we were prepared to get rid of the carbon tax and bring forward an emissions trading <laughs> scheme. <laughs> You've got an election that, promise now. That uh, emissions trading scheme that is one of the best ways of bringing down emissions. The other side of politics wants to put $3.2 billion into a plan that no economist or scientist is prepared to back and have said they won't put any more money in if they can't make the 5% emission uh, reduction target. Now, you know, with the prospect of direct action not working, with the prospect of emissions going up and us not meeting our target, you know, why would we sign on to a scheme that would be economically and environmentally disastrous in terms of what they're putting forward? The Greens leader, Kristen Milne, is calling Tony Abbott Typhoon Tony this morning, saying if it's OK for him to call Bill Shorten Electricity Bill, they can call him Typhoon Tony. Is well, that juvenile uh, or is that appropriate? Well, I think uh, Tony Abbott can uh, get rid of uh, calling people names and I'm not interested in the naming the, the sort of uh, nickname business, but certainly uh, we do have a serious issue on the table, and that is that what the coalition's putting forward um, isn't being backed, won't be able to deliver, oh, and no. our environment and our economy will be worse for it. OK, Kieran, let's put some facts on the table. Labor's had every position under the sun on a carbon tax. Julia Gillard went to the election saying there'd be no carbon tax under a government she leads. Then weeks before the last election, Kevin Rudd said he's scrapping the carbon tax. Then now Anthony Albanese said we'll have a zero price on the carbon tax. Then Bill Shorten leaks to the newspaper that maybe he's in favour of scrapping the carbon tax before he's overruled by his own caucus. Mm -hmm. So Labor does not have a consistent position. But I tell you who does have a consistent position. John That's Howard. the Australian people. The Australian people have said in the most emphatic election result at the last election, we do not want a carbon tax. Unfortunately for Ed and his friends in the Labor Party, Party, you had the lowest primary vote in 100 years. You're, you're not, you know, that goes back quite a way, Ed, 1903. And they were sending you a very direct message. Now, you can keep your head in the sand and say that election didn't matter and it was all because of internal division. John Howard it was back because of your John failure, Howard back to, ETS. failure to provide an Malcolm economic Turnbull back to ETS. people and your Tony, failure Tony to actually come clean with and Australian people. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Now, when, second, now, when it comes to a carbon tax... Let's go to... Let's go to... John Howard went to the 07 election. I just want to say, when it comes to the carbon tax... The end of days... It, we'll finish, been, by the time been, you finish this it has point. been a disaster for Australian businesses and for Australian families. We want to cut Rubbish. the cost Rubbish. of economic, living economic and growth. We'll that by uh, rid of economic the Just growth. a quick wrap-up, Ed. John Howard takes an ETS, the 07 election. Malcolm Turnbull supported an ETS until Tony Abbott changed his mind, going from having, a, as he put it, a simple tax, then ditch the ETS. And now you're going to this basically, instead of making polluters pay, you want to pay the polluters under direct action. <laughs> so let's get, let's get real about whether or not these guys are fair income on climate change. And the problem is going to be when direct action doesn't work, where to next? We're going to have uh, for live coverage of the introduction of the repeal bill and the, the, the subsequent debate from nine. Bit of a preview there from you two gentlemen, a warm-up. Thank you for that. Let's move on to the, bo the boats issue now. Sure. The, uh, people swap arrangement with Indonesia that's been floated by the Indonesian vice president's advisor. Is it going to happen or not? Look, there's no people swap discussions. I've spoken to, <laughs> to Scott Morrison. He made that clear yesterday. Uh, look, we know how to manage the relationship with Indonesia. <laughs> oh, you're doing a great well, job. John Howard oh. dealt with five Indonesian presidents, and under Labor's watch, you had the Oceanic Viking, you had the live animal export debacles, and you had thousands of people coming from Indonesia to Australia in, a, in an unauthorised manner. So we. But why? Why? The, so the, the, why, the mixed, manage... why the mixed messages then, if, well, we... you, if the relationship Well, so actually, there, there, there's really now unprecedented levels of cooperation when you talk about the federal police, when you talk... But not on communication. When you talk about, <laughs> when you talk about intelligence, all those areas. I mean, what's happened in the eight weeks since sovereign borders come in? 
Karen. What has happened in those eight weeks? We don't Actually, know because you won't tell us. No, no Scott Morrison has <laughs> told the Australian oh, yeah. The unauthorised <laughs> uh, boat arrivals has come down by 75%. Okay, 75%. that's the bottom line. We know that. No, no, no. no. When he's the facts tell you a pretty good story. Josh, when you say that the relationship with Indonesia is going swimmingly under you guys, you should be the parliamentary secretary for stand-up. Seriously. Everyone knows that this is under a rocky relationship right now and it's on uh, really uh, unsure footing because of the fact that you refused to respect the Indonesians' position, that they said they would not accept the turn back the boats policy, that they had their position, you refused to accept it. We find out more from the Jakarta Post than we do from Scott Morrison. Boat numbers are down. Boat numbers are down. Well and, and I'll truly. tell you why they're down, Kieran. They're down it's because you, we, took, it, we, took, <laughs> we took this a action in terms of the PNG uh, refugee resettlement agreement. That has had the biggest impact. Not the way that they restructure their media management approach. That is not to be uh, uh, put as the reason it's why not, numbers it's are down. It's not, it's not me, it's you. There's a very serious Let, let's, no, let's move on. I want, to ask, I want to ask you finally about the, the 44th Parliament as we sure. head in uh, today to the legislative business sure. getting underway. Uh, Bronwyn Bishop is, is speaker. Um, Ed Husey, what did you think of some of your colleagues' welcome to Bronwyn Bishop, Graham Perrett and Kelvin Thompson? It was hardly a, a red carpet, was it? No, I think it's just a welcome Australian Parliament style. I think, uh, uh, well, there are a lot of concerns about the fact as to whether or not, you know, uh, a Speaker Bishop will be able to make the transition, uh, as was described from uh, poacher to uh, gamekeeper, uh, in one great leap. But... People are obviously willing to, to give her that opportunity. Um, we're also disappointed... It was off to a good start yesterday, well, though. The, well, the, 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 the noises uh, from the, the new speaker sounded promising about bipartisanship and independence. Look, I think there are a lot of people that are prepared to work with her, but I think I was also disappointed we had a chance... Uh, under the last parliament, there was an agreement that even the coalition was ready to support, that the speaker would be of the coalition and the deputy speaker of uh, Labor. Um, but they, you know, reneged on that. The minute they get the numbers, it's back to old, it old, start. old school. It was a great start. I mean, there's no question about who's boss in the chamber now. And it is Bronwyn Bishop. She knows the standing orders, she knows the rules, and she has asserted herself from day one. Uh, I think she'll become a cult figure, really. A bit like, you know, Betty Boothroyd, who was the first uh, female speaker in the House of Commons, in fact, the Labor speaker in the 90s, um, who presided for something like eight or nine years. Uh, and I think uh, Bronwyn Bishop will be deeply respected by both sides. Uh, she asserted herself early, and, you know, Graham Perrett, he should have taken a shovel into the What about time. Tony Abbott? He kept digging himself what about, such a What about what Tony what Abbott? Wasn't that just trans Like, calling for calm and civility. I think that's just... We, we should all follow his lead, shouldn't we? No we character assassination. Was there a bit of tongue-in-cheek there, given, you know, the recent history? Well, that was, you know, Labor's recent history. I mean, how terrible was the last parliament when you consider they had recycled three leaders? I think that was the first time in the history a, of the Commonwealth have you guys been through an RSL parliament, there had been hypnosis, three, three different speakers. They've been through an RSL hypnosis treatment. They, they, they are not the same people. You're all talking about having a calm and civil parliament after you spent the best part of the 43rd chucking rocks. Jonathan Edwards, he's the... RSL hypnotist, isn't I it? I like it. That's it. You've <laughs> got John Edwards. John Edwards. <laughs> Thank you both. Ed Hughes we should Josh get him Rundberg. on. Why don't we? Good idea. A fourth chair. So, a fourth chair. We'll the super producer in. can do it. If uh, anyone can, exactly, super producer. Exactly, along with the moth. Thank you both. A quick break on AIM Agenda, and we'll be back with the, the, yeah, the Parliament getting down to business in the introduction of the carbon tax repeal bill live to the chamber in a moment.